Hi everyone, my name is Alexandra and I'm a bibliophile. Welcome back to a lovely jaunt where we read better, not more. Today I have a bit of an unusual video for us today because I'm actually joined by my friends Emily and Yvette and we're going to be talking about our literary society, what it is, how it's different from a book club, and why it's like my most favorite thing ever and why I think everyone should be a part of one. So welcome Emily and welcome Yvette. How are you guys doing today? Good, it's Saturday. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So Yvette, can you explain to us the difference between a literary society and a book club? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of our members describes it best when she says she loves a literary society because it's like a book club without any homework. Yeah. Emily? <laughs> yeah. Um, so the basic structure that we do is uh, instead of one book that everyone reads and discusses, we have a prompt. And the prompt can be anything from a simple, tell us about what you're reading right now, to a more complex uh, tell us about a book that you uh, connected with the main character. So it's really a wide range of prompts and then everybody comes and they bring a book that they want to talk about that applies to that prompt. Uh, so everyone gets to talk about something that they love personally instead of you know starting off with a book that someone else loves and wants to talk about. Um, yeah I think one of the things that I really enjoy about the literary society structure versus a book club is, well, there's really two aspects. One is that we get a lot of really great book recommendations because everybody's bringing in, so as many people as there are at that meeting, could be eight, 10, 12 people, you know, you get that many book recommendations and you hear in-depth commentary on that many books every time you meet. And so I feel like I get a broader like spectrum of literature that I'm exposed to and because everybody has different reading tastes like then I get exposed to books that normally I wouldn't really be attracted to or pick up or be curious about. And then the other thing of course is that you never end up being stuck reading a book that you hate. I don't think we've had a literary society in which anybody's brought the same genre. I feel like at every meeting, each person is reading a different genre, and it, so it makes it so much fun. It's very diverse. There's no repetition. Like Everybody has something different that they love, um, which is kind of funny because it's just an organic group of friends that we started inviting. You know, there was no, there was no like, hey, if you love mystery, come, you know, like, but everybody is reading something different, and so it makes it, I think, a lot more fun that way. I agree. Not to mention all of that exposure. I mean, prior to a uh, literary society, I did not read Agatha Christie. And, you know, Emily is the Agatha Christie. Uh, I would say evangelistic level Agatha yeah. Christie. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and now I'm reading a ton of Agatha Christie and I absolutely love her. That was a genre I was not into before literary society at all. I feel really good right now. <laughs> So Yvette, how did you come up with the idea for a literary society? So we went to a bar in Tower. It's like this old vintage bar called Lucy's. And this lady sat down right next to me and she had a glass of red wine and was drinking a book. And I was just like, oh, hey, kindred spirit. And so I started talking to her about books and she recommended the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. And so I was just like, you know what? I'll get it on audio. And I started listening to it, and it was amazing. And I just thought, oh my gosh, Emily needs to read this book. This is right up Emily's alley. Because it was about World War II. <laughs> and books. <laughs> it was books in World War II, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then uh, both Emily and I were listening to it at the same time, which was awesome. <laughs> we were already before, so we used to work together in the same office. And before that, we were already like, finding time to like hide in corners and talk about the books we were reading and after reading that book together we were talking about like hey the concept of a literary society sounds really fun because it, it's the same thing people get to come and talk about love <laughs> and we had one day where i was like talking about my feelings about one of the characters and like her like the reason behind why she ends up the way she ends up in the book and also the vet was like yeah we need to have a literary society. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's fantastic. And I think, you know, um, 
just bringing people together over a shared love. Obviously, we're going to have a ton to talk about and a ton to share about, and we're never really going to ever run out of things to say. Well, and I felt like the response to it was really, like, amazingly positive because I was like, okay, we'll just, like, propose this idea to some people like if it's only a vet and I that show up well we'll just have some fun right but everybody I was like hey would you be interested be like before I got finished explain what that was they were like yes yes I think that was you like your response Alexandra was just like this sounds great let's do it you know yeah. so like from the very start like the the response to the idea was really positive yeah absolutely one of the yeah one of the things that and I were talking about um that we miss about being able to meet in person um, is that we would just tell people like, if you want to bring a food or a beverage, please do, it's not a requirement. Um, it was usually at my house, so I would always just make sandwiches and have some tea out, and you know, that was standard. But I really feel like people bringing food became another way that they could share what they loved. Um, it was a way to share themselves. Um, and so that was, I think, another extra special part of it. Like, you know, we had, people show up with cookie dough and bake cookies in my kitchen while it was going on, which made the place smell amazing. Or we had people show up with like Costco sized bags of M&Ms and that was extremely addictive. Like you got a huge range of things. And, and I think that was just like an extra way that people felt like, oh, I can share something I love with other people. The other thing is like the amount of time that we spend just talking. Yeah. About you know, it was like, <laughs> oh, maybe it'll be two hours. I mean, we would talk for four. Sometimes we were at your house till like nine o'clock at night, just talking about life and stuff after yeah, we finished books. the meeting. Yeah, because I think your love of books often is revolving around things you love in life. And so it, you know, can, I think in a number of cases, it actually like went into like bigger discussions that we'd always wanted to have with people. And so it, it kind of was like a platform for that where you could just talk about so much. You remember the what is art discussion? Yes, <laughs> yes that, that happened. <laughs> that was a I had so many feelings. <laughs> you guys were very uh, tolerant of me trying to like work out something that I was very <laughs> upset about. <laughs> but honestly, I think that those discussions that we had afterwards, um, I think that literary society honestly creates a safe space and you know you're in an environment yeah. where you're welcome and your opinions are valid and your feelings are valid and you're not being put down and then and so yeah we created a safe space for you to work through what is art and all of us to chime in and have a really heavy discussion yeah. about it but you know here we are not that well known to each other basically a house full of strangers having these really deep conversations and that's because we're so passionate about the books that we discuss. And when we're allowed to be that passionate and open with a group of strangers, it does allow you to open up to even more in-depth conversation afterwards. So that's yeah, one of the I, things that I love about it is the friendships that have come about from it. Yeah, I think that is such a good point. I have always felt like books are such a great gateway for really talking about things within the book or behind the book or you know kind of underneath the book what is the meaning behind the work and even to like self-reflect I often talk about this a lot because I'm always introspecting and I'm like how how can I be a better person you know um, but like that's really a way in which books provide sort of like a like I want to understand other people's perspectives and then b sort of how does that affect who I am and like rearticulate that into meaning for myself and books are such a great gateway for doing that and then when you add the communal aspect of it then it's not just me having a dialogue with the book it's me having a dialogue with the book and then also with the six or eight other people who are in the room and how can you not build a bond of deep friendship in that kind of context yeah because I think we we're drawn to the books we're drawn to because they speak to something that we're either struggling with or we're fascinated by. And so I think in letting people talk about the books that they're drawn to, it just very naturally leads to letting people talk about like the issues they're struggling with, the things that really fascinate them, you know, ideas that they've been wanting to talk about. And the only way they've been able to really, you know, talk about those ideas is just reading about them. And so it, it gives you, it gives people the opportunity to talk about the things that previously they'd only been able to read about. Cause it's not like, you know, in most circles you can just like, you know, bring up, hey, 
I've really been, you know, wanting to talk about this book about World War I. Would you talk about it with me? Like, that's not something that really, you know, comes up in your average conversation. So it's like, it's a place that you get to talk about it. Okay, so maybe you guys can tell me a little bit about your book taste. Um, I am not a heavy reader by any means. I do use literature as a means of escapism, a form of entertainment. Um, and so I think that my favorite genres, I know that my favorite genres are um, young adult fiction. I like contemporary fiction a lot. I also really enjoy sci-fi and fantasy. So just like more, I mean, the contemporary fiction can be a little bit deeper sometimes, but for the most part with the young adult and the sci-fi fantasy, it is more of a entertain me value, but those are the books that I truly enjoy reading. <laughs> Uh, I have definitely always been uh, a book lover. Um, I've definitely, I've tried to grow myself in that because like I will default to like vintage mysteries. I, I love those. Obviously we talked about like I'm probably way into Agatha Christie, but that's never going to stop. Um, <laughs> but I have been trying to like mix that with doing some more like um, a lot of uh, historical nonfiction is what I've been really trying to like you know, go back and forth. And so like, you know, I'll read a couple of Agatha Christie's because you can go through really fast, especially in audio. Um, and then go towards some historical nonfiction. But I used to read a lot of historical fiction. And then um, I realized that the nonfiction is actually generally wilder than the, the, the fiction. Like the true stories are always like, wow, okay, like if you tried to put that into fiction, people would be like, oh, come on. That's not, that's not, that's too much. But like when you can tag on like, oh, by the way, this is a true story. Like the stories that you get out of that are just amazing. So those are kind of like the two that I go back and forth with. Um, I have also been just started reading science fiction. I mean, I've always loved science fiction movies and I don't know why I've never really read um, science, science fiction books. So I've started doing that recently and, and that's been a lot of fun too because that's just wild. Like science fiction is just like, anything and everything you can think of. How did you guys come up with the discussion themes? Because I know you have like a whole page that we've been just like running through. Emily and I started a list. We started brainstorming and uh, we created a, a Word document of a list of different prompt ideas. Um, and that's, that's where we started from. Um, but we've grown, Emily. It yeah, I, we um, we went through a couple of those um, on the list, and then we started asking people like, you know, if you have any ideas, let us know. Um, and then usually we would either do at the end of the meetings, we would say like, hey, these are a couple of prompts that we have in mind. Does anybody like, should we vote on that now? Um, we also started a Facebook page for the group. And sometimes what we do is just put up like three or four prompts and let people vote. And we'll do like the top one we'll do um, the next month. And then we'll kind of just go down the line of those as who got like the next two, two three votes. Um, so there's a couple of different ways that we can um, uh, prompts every month. And um, well, I, I'm actually designing a little like PDF download for you guys. So if you want to have like guidelines for starting your own, why do you, why do you think people should do a literary society instead of a book club? I know I keep saying my opinion for why I think you should. Um, but why, why do you think it works so well? From, so I have, I've been a part of one book club, um, and it didn't last very long. I think I did like two or three books. And the problem I had was like, there was a leader to the book club and she was choosing all of the books and it was becoming very personal for her. Um, it was us since like her saying like, please like my books. Um, and if you were like, you know, very tempedly like, oh, you know, like this wasn't really my favorite type of book because they were all terrible. Um, <laughs> we can't say that. So you're just like, well, you know, it really didn't, wasn't really my type of book. She would like literally be like, oh, really? And so <laughs> I feel like literary society, you, no one has like feelings on the line. You know, there's no one asking for approval. No one's like feels like oh if you didn't like the book you didn't like me you know like people take that very personally um and so literary society completely removes that you don't you don't no one is you know because we have wildly different genres 
narrators. Like a lot of times, like I said, people aren't, don't even, haven't even read the same books. And so there's like no one coming in with any need to like, you know, or a need to be approved of through their book. And so literary society, I think, frees you from that. There's, there's no pressure. Nobody's gonna get their feelings hurt. Everybody can just talk about what they personally love. Um, and and you just, like we were talking about, it's just a safe space and I think in comparison to a traditional book club. Yes, and to tag on to that, um, another aspect I think works really well is that we have this under, underlying current, whether we have a prompt or not, the idea of the literary society is you are talking about what interests you, what you're currently reading or a book that you read and has just been on your mind and you just want to talk about it. You don't even have to respond to a prompt that we come up with. If you don't have an answer to it, that's fine. Just talk about any book. It's not like we're going to be like, oh, you failed to talk about what we were going to talk about. No, just talk about books. That's the whole point. And yeah, yeah. yeah and I think that we just kind of have that overriding spirit but also it's not, I feel like most book clubs are very exclusive. You know, you have to sign up, you read the book that's assigned to you, you have to have access to the book, um, and then you have to go and talk about said book. And with Literary Society, it's, it doesn't matter if you have the book that you're supposed to read or whatnot. Anybody, anybody that's ever read a book can just show up and participate and honestly have a good time. So it is all like, it doesn't exclude anybody. It's really attainable. Yeah, I think we have a, a group of people with really great senses of humor. So I think in, bring your sense of humor to literary society. Books are supposed to be fun. They're supposed to be joyous. And like I said, even when we we're talking about books that we love to hate, that was one of our like most laughter filled like times oh, that yeah. we like <laughs> had talking about books. So I think, you know, even though Literary Society, first of all, has a super fancy sounding name, which I like, but at the same time, like it's less fancy than a book club because I think we bring a really good sense of humor to our reading and to our reading taste. It's not about being smarter than somebody or reading fancier books than somebody or having more sophisticated, more better opinion. So those are my favorite. Well, I mean, <laughs> to, Yvette and I were just, we're talking about this a while ago, um, like to show like how free we tell people to be um, when it comes to reading, bringing books. Like we've had someone bring like a literal children's picture book that they were reading with their kids and they wanted to talk about, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah. And that was the book that they love to hate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great discussion though. We had a great discussion about this children's picture book. That was a very like passionate discussion that erupted from that. <laughs> yeah what's what we often say is we have two rules um one rule is you can say anything you want this is completely safe space read whatever you want and say whatever you want like there's no limits um but that means our second rule is that you can't bring your kids <laughs> um because we did have a couple of members be like oh you know can my kids come um and we just told them like we want people to be able to feel like they can say what they want and they can talk about the books they want. And sometimes they might not be that comfortable if there are children in the room. And we just want it to be a place where people are very comfortable, uh, no matter what they want to read. Like, you know, there, <laughs> some people like to read like, you know, crazy romances and they should be able to talk about that. But also like there are some very like literary books um, that discuss topics that are difficult and we want people to be able to talk about those and and by and large like members are fine with that you know and we're not like don't bring your kids you know <laughs> it's just like hey this is why we ask that you don't bring your kids um, because we want just people to be comfortable being in a room with adults and maybe discussing adult topics yeah as the most inappropriate member of the club i can <laughs> confirm that i say things that are not suitable for children and that's perfectly okay that's perfectly yeah. okay it only adds to the fun <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys have any advice for people who now as they should be we've made the most articulate and persuasive argument that anyone could ever make for a literary society at this point in the video so do you guys have any advice for anybody who wants to start a literary society of their own i would say just just start like if 
I think when we first started talking about it, we were kind of like, well, do you think anybody else would want to do this? Um, but we decided to just try it. Like I was in the break room and the vet came in, was like, I started the Facebook page. And so we're like, okay, let's just ask. You know, um, I think sometimes we get a little bit nervous about like inviting people to this and it's turned out to be such a great thing and we've made so many friendships and everybody has brought some money. Um, there are people that I never thought that I would like know on a personal level that I talk to all the time now, you know, and <laughs> that's because of literary society. So it might be, I think, a little bit hard in this day and age to start the conversation like hey would you like to do this so I would just say do it just just give it a try you know yeah another really important thing and it was honestly one of the most frequently asked questions we got when we invited people to come and talk about books right it was I listen to audible or I listen to audiobooks do those count yes those count <laughs> yes you know you gotta a lot of us don't have that is read a book. <laughs> read audiobooks or books. Accept it, and you're gonna have so much more participation. <laughs> and we were worried about, you know, are we gonna have engagement? And so I know that you and I had sat down and discussed like what are questions, like generic questions that we can modify so that when someone is discussing their book, we can one of us can engage if nobody else is engaging with questions or you know, right. trying, trying to make it a conversation and the natural flow. Um, yeah, so. before the first one, we did decide like, okay, if no one is responding to this person, one of us will respond so that they're like not feeling like no one is like engaging with them. Um, we have not had to do that very much though. Like, I feel like that's, you know, like maybe we have to do it like one or two times at the very beginning. And, but after that, it really gets moving. But yeah, that is a good point to like, just if, if you're the person who's kind of like the starting point or you have like two or three people that are starting point, just to make that commitment to like, if someone is trying to explain something and no one's really responding to not leave them hanging. That's really interesting because I didn't know that you guys had done that, but now I'm like thinking back to some of our early com like times that we did it and like no, <laughs> <laughs> very sneaky. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. We hope that you enjoyed listening to it as much as we enjoyed getting together. And it, again, if you are as excited about literary societies as we are, I have that PDF download for you guys on my website and linked down below. Um, so I hope you decide to either transition your book club or start up a conversation with your friends who also love reading because it has truly been um, a joy to just share a love of reading, but also to connect deeply with people who are now some of my closest friends in my life. And um, those, those are the bonds that are forged in the fires of Mount Doom, in the rage of books that you love to hate, um, and it cannot be undone, and also in inappropriate <laughs> jokes. So... Um, it's just a wonderful <laughs> life together and to share a love of books together. So thank you again, Emily and Yvette, for being here and sharing with me about literary society. And thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of it, because it's just a big, a big old literary hug for me. Thanks for having <laughs> well, us. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks for inviting us and for sharing literary society with people. Preach. <laughs> 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 All right. Bye, everybody. Uh, and until next time, my name is Alexandra, and I'm still a bibliophile.